What is up guys, Rick Kakis here, and today we are going to be taking a look at a very unique new faction weapon added into Destiny 2 with the November 2017 Faction Rally. Now this is actually my most desired of these new faction weapons, and I was lucky enough to get it right off the bat, so we're going to talk about how this weapon functions, what it's all about, why it's so unique, and why it has so much potential. Now this weapon in question is the Guiding Star Dead Orbit Auto Rifle. As much as I don't want Dead Orbit to win and get that grenade launcher, I do have to pledge them to get this weapon. So why is this weapon so unique? Why are we talking about this? Well, this belongs to the fastest firing auto rifle archetype, doing 720 rounds per minute for its rate of fire. It also has a very high magazine of 52 natively, and that goes up to 58 with its appended mag perk. But this is unique because there's only two other legendary auto rifles that exist within this 720 rounds per minute archetype, and they're both energy viced auto rifles. So, this is the only 720 rounds per minute kinetic auto rifle in Destiny 2 that's legendary right now. The only one. So that makes it very, very unique. If you do like those other two viced auto rifles and you wanted to change up your loadout, you wanted to use especially an exotic energy weapon like the Cold Heart, which has some very good endgame applications even in the raid, you literally couldn't use both, but now you do have the ability to use the Guiding Star and the Cold Heart, or the Guiding Star and the Sunshot, or whatever other exotic you want to run. And that is very, very important, because that archetype, again, huge rates of fire and massive magazines. That makes for great overall damage output. So we have some real potential here for endgame sort of utility, especially against bosses. You're just putting forward so much damage. The Guiding Star is the closest thing you're going to get to the sweet business in terms of a legendary in the kinetic slot. But is this thing actually good? After using it, after testing it, does it actually ring true to these possibilities? Well, let's start with PvP. The first thing you're going to notice about the Guiding Star, the first thing is that it has a lot of recoil. This thing jumps up and to the right pretty violently. Like, it definitely is not an accurate, it's not a precision weapon. That is for sure. If you're used to using something like the origin story, that thing is just damaging enemies from miles away. The Guiding Star is nowhere near as accurate. And quite frankly, because of this, I was really dreading going into PvP and testing it out. But it turns out it's really not that bad, especially with the help of a kinetic counterbalance mod. For your chest armor and for your cloak, if you're a hunter, you can get this mod and it will calm down the recoil uh, a little bit. It's not massive, but it will definitely help things. And the Guiding Star, if you use it within close range in PvP, like you're seeing in the background gameplay, you don't even have to be that accurate. You don't even have to go for headshots all the time. The body shot damage is substantial enough that you just melt enemies. Remember that one of the perks is high caliber rounds, so your damage output is great and you're making it harder for your opponents to hit you back. So the combination makes for a weapon that is very deadly in those closer medium range engagements. Honestly, overall, it was a decently fun and effective gun to use. Is it top tier? No. And that's because I cannot see this being better than the Antiope D. The Antiope D just dump trucks on people close range and is much more accurate. The Antiope D can legitimately fight pretty confidently in medium to medium long ranges, whereas the Guiding Star, the recoil will just make it nigh impossible to do so. If you are sticking to those kind of closer range engagements that you'll see me really try to do in the background gameplay, it's actually pretty darn good, but it just can't function beyond those ranges. All right, now what about PvE? Well, here it's pretty darn good you are able to just melt multiple enemies with a single magazine. There is a bunch of times where I get a quick double kill, I go to reload, but I look down and, oh, I've still got, you know, 20 rounds, 25 rounds 
in a magazine. That is a really good feeling where you get that double kill, you kill, um, you know, a couple of hobgoblins or whatever, and you still have enough ammo for a whole nother engagement. You aren't reloading all the time, but, you know, in the background gameplay, you'll see me reload so much, I'm so used to using something, like the origin star, you were just constantly reloading and reloading and reloading, but with the guiding star, you really can extend your engagement lengths, and you're not, you don't have to reload all the time, which you sometimes fall into that trap with the lower magazines of the kind of higher damage archetypes. Now, is this as good as the origin story? Um, against ads, I don't think so. It can just dump truck normal ads. You've got high caliber rounds, which does come up. You just stun enemies immediately upon shooting them. And the massive magazine and the great damage output, you, you mow through enemies. But that rampage perk, that rampage perk that the origin story has is so phenomenal, so easy to trigger, and it, the damage increase you get from that is outrageous. If the Guiding Star had rampage, it w probably would be the best PvE auto rifle in the game. Like, that's how powerful that perk is, but unfortunately, it doesn't. Kind of annoying that it doesn't. Like, I don't know why Bungie is so afraid to have actually competitive weapons. Like, you, s you see just a handful of weapons kind of get out of control in PvP, and they seem so afraid to have other weapons belong to the meta. Like, if they would have just made this weapon have a great recoil pattern and given it something like dynamic sway reduction or rampage or whatever in that final perk slot, you would have another really competitive weapon that everyone would start to use and it would kind of freshen up the game a little bit, but it just kind of gets added to the pile of not as good in terms of PvP, of course. Now again, though we're talking about PvE, and although I don't think it's as good at taking down those mob enemies, I think against boss enemies, we're gonna have to do some actual calculations. Like, I'm gonna take this thing into the raid, I'm gonna really try to figure out, I'm gonna do actual damage calculations and figure out which one is better, but when I was using it against a strike boss that you can see in the background, I mean, he was turned the wrong way, unfortunately, but the amount of damage you could output, and I was starting to hit that head at the end, just kind of hitting the back of it, that's a lot of damage. Like the amount of damage you're able to output with this weapon, even when you don't have something like a Titan Rally Barricade, just 52 rounds without stopping. And after that initial kick of recoil that I mentioned before, it seems to calm itself down and so it's easier to drag on target. Now this of course can be a little bit of a problem in PvP, but in PvE against massive enemies, against strike bosses, it's no problem at all. You recall off target, well you drag it back and put your sights back on the crit and you're just going to town. Again, this is, it really does feel like the legendary version of the sweet business. Like not as good as the sweet business, especially with the rate of fire increase, but you can always use the sweet business and having this will definitely open up your exotic slot to be able to use something like the Warcliffe Coil or the Legend of Acris or a whole host of other very effective exotic weapons. So against mob enemies, pretty darn effective. And against boss enemies, pretty darn effective. So we've got a gun here that's really just good in PvE. Is it going to fall to the absolute top slot? Well, again, we don't know yet. There's a lot of testing that needs to be done, but I really love the versatility that this weapon gives. Seriously, we've touched on the raid earlier in the video, but during the Callus encounter, when you have something like the Cold Heart and you're trying to use that against the Skulls, we've all been there where you just run out of ammo for your Cold Heart on the Skulls. You go back into the arena, you, you know, there's no special ammo dropping and you don't get as much DPS as you would want because you want your Cold Heart for Callus as well as the Skulls. I seriously think you could start seeing a lot more Guided Stars for taking out the Skulls. If you get a Rally Barricade and you have the Guided Star, that's gonna be just as good at just murking those Skulls, and then you get all of your Cold Heart ammo just for Callus, which is very, very advantageous. So I'm definitely bringing this thing in a raid. I can't wait to see how it is. And from first impressions, from using it in some strikes, in some public events, and even in PvP, I'm impressed with this weapon. I think in PvP, I'm a little disappointed that the recall pattern isn't better and the, and the last perk isn't better and that we could finally have a weapon to challenge the top tier because I don't think this is top tier, but it's still a legitimately fun thing to use.
And there's nothing better than triggering Uriel's gift users who are a little bit too comfortable in close range and they're not expecting you to use the guiding star. And so guys, that's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed and found this interesting. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys wanna see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. Now, if you guys want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That's linked in the description down below, as is my Twitch channel, which you can also follow. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, have a good day.